If you've been lucky enough to stumble across this plumberparts.co.uk video all about how to fix radiator valves, then great, we're gonna get down to that any minute. Before we do, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to our video by clicking on the card that's appearing now. They're available throughout the whole of the video. You can click on them at any time. Also, follow us on Twitter and Facebook where we do plumbing disasters, photos, plumbing banter, and scrubs of my cat, the big fat G, whenever we can. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Right, lovely. Oh, dearie me, nice cup of tea. Hold tight and welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. Obviously, you are here because you've got a leaking radiator valve like the one we've got here. This is called a lock shield valve and they're really, really easy to fix if you've got a small leak on them. But what we're gonna do is firstly look at the valve from the side on and there's gonna be a few different points on the valve that could leak. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna address each one of those points in succession and you'll hopefully be able to fix your valve and go on and have a nice dry floor or carpet. So without further ado, let's go and see how we can stop your radiator valve from leaking. So here's what a standard radiator valve looks like when it's in situ on the radiator. Now there's a few different points at where it can leak. We can leak on the thread of this insert as it goes into the radiator. We can leak on the nut and olive here where the body of our radiator valve goes onto the insert of our radiator as well. We can leak on the nut and olive just on here as well, on the pipe that comes up into the radiator valve. Or if we lift up this piece here, you should be able to find as well that it can leak from this little nut here. So what we're gonna do is address the leaks and how to fix them here, here, here and here in order. So problem number one is that we've got a leak on the thread that goes into the radiator insert. Now these are generally really quite easy to fix because you don't have to worry about draining the whole heating system out. Before we have a look at how to fix it, it's a great idea to know how they work. All you have is a radiator insert with a male half inch thread on it going into a female half inch thread on your radiator. That's sealed up using PTFE, hemp and boss white or some Loctite. It really depends on what the plumber used back in the day when your radiators were installed. Now the great thing about this is to seal off the system and not to have great worries about any leaks, all you need to do is shut off the radiator valve at each end of the radiator. And you do that by turning the radiator valve clockwise, or as we call it in the trade, righty tighty. And this also goes the same for if you've got a thermostatic radiator valve on the radiator as well. Now the next thing you wanna to do to make sure that those two valves are holding, get yourself a radiator bleed key and just slacken off the radiator bleed at the top of the radiator and hopefully water should stop pretty much straight away. Once there's no water or air coming out, it's very important that you shut that radiator bleed valve key before you move on to the next stage. Now that you've got the radiator valves turned off and you're happy that they're both holding, what you need to do is get a set of grips, just hold the valve body here and then just slacken that nut off. You're probably gonna need a small paint tray or a towel underneath just to catch any drips. But you're gonna watch all this first, then you'll know exactly what to do and you'll be really quick at it as well. You shouldn't get a lot of water out. And what you need to do, once you've slackened this nut off here, you want to get your adjustable spanner on this hex here and start unwinding it. Um, unwind it and try and expose four or five threads at least. And then as soon as you've got those threads exposed, you wrap your PTFE round. If you want beforehand, try and clean off any of the old sealant that was on there. That's sometimes a good idea. Now you can obviously either do the safe option and expose just three or four threads, maybe five threads. Or if you want to let the whole of the radiator wall out of this radiator just here, you can completely remove Remove the insert if you like and then work with that on your lap. But the thing is once we've got this out here you can get all the old sealant off here, pop your new sealant on. Now take note as well as to how we wrap the PTFE onto the thread. It's very important that you wrap the PTFE on the thread so that when you screw back in the insert it doesn't actually stop pushing the PTFE out and doesn't actually do any work. So we've put our sealant back on now. All we need to do is just re-screw in our insert and then tighten up the nut and olive by using our grips and our adjustables. And then hopefully we should be able to turn the water back on and find out that we've sealed up successfully that radiator insert there. The next leak problem you might have is on this nut here. The best thing to do is shut down each end of the radiator and then use a bleak key as well to make sure that those valves are holding just like we did in the first bit. And then, then use your set of grips here to undo this nut, completely slacken it back and try and expose the face of the olive. Now usually what you'll need to do is get yourself some PTFE or some Boss White, wrap that round the olive. Again, look at which way, which direction we're putting this on. We're putting it on in a way that means that when we tighten our nut up, it's not gonna unravel our PTFE. We'll pop this back on there like so. And then remake up the joint and union again by grabbing the body of the valve and then tightening the nut up again. And in most cases, that's all you're going to need to do. Now, the two fixes for the leaks we've just done there were nice and easy because they're on what I call the dead side of the radiator. They're on the sides of the radiator that you can valve off and the rest of the heating system because you've got the radiator valves there to do it. 
But this leak here on the lower nut, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to valve off. Now, I would say every time, if you're not happy about doing any of the work on this particular part of the job, then the best thing is to do is to get a plumber in to do this bit for you. Because if you're not quick enough and you don't know what you're doing, it's gonna require you to drain the whole heating system out, you're gonna have to re-inhibit the heating system and stuff like that. But if you're lucky, you might be able to do this quickly. What you wanna do is set yourself up so if you do start to get a leak, it's not gonna ruin your whole house. The best thing is, is to get a few towels laid out, get a few paint scuttles laid out as well so they can catch any water while you're working on it and have a bucket near you for you to tip your paint scuttles in and everything should be okay. What you need to do is, if you're finding that it's leaking from this nut here, is firstly, you could just try and grab the body and just nip the nut up a bit, give it a wipe down with some tissue and see if it stays dry. If that happens, then boom, you've done the job and everything's okay. If it keeps leaking, then what you're gonna have to do is undo this nut here, take it back, now you're gonna start getting water come out, but don't worry, you're ready. And the idea is, is that you have a small length of PTFE ready, just whip that off like that, and this is gonna be ready to wrap around your olive. So you're gonna undo this nut here, expose the olive by lifting the valve up a little bit. You might even need to lift the whole radiator, but don't lift the valve right off. If you do that, you're gonna get a nice little fountain of water, and it's probably gonna beat your little paint scuttle you've got catching it. Then get the PTFE, and then try and wrap it round and round and round the olive as much as you can, and then bang the nut right back up onto the body, and with any luck, you should be able to tighten that up, and hopefully the PTFE's made a nice seal on your nut and olive, and everything's okay. Be aware as well, if you do let quite a lot of water out and you're on a pressurised system, you're going to need to think about topping up the pressure. And also, it's always a good idea, I'd say, that if you're doing any work to a heating system, to inhibit the heating system as well. We're going to leave links in the description below on how to do those particular parts of the job. So the last part of the leak that you need to fix on a radiator valve is actually on this nut here. And this particular fix works for most types of TRVs as well, whereby you've got the numbers on the side and the twiddly bit. All you need to do is know how to take the head off and every TRV is different. Specifically, it's an old type Danfoss one where you need to pull a little plastic lug out and then undo a little Allen key. But anyway, we've got our top off here already. Now there are two types of fix for this. There's the quick fix and the slightly slower fix. So there's the Jensen button fix, which is the slower one, and the Lewis Hamilton one, which is a bit quicker. And maybe we'll get you in pole position when it comes to plumbing. Anyway, the first one is you just grab the nut here. This is the gland, the packing gland, and you just tighten that up. If you just tighten that up by going righty tighty, don't go absolutely mental with it, because the tighter they are, the harder it is actually to turn the valve on and off. And then wipe it down with a little bit of tissue and you might find that you fix the leak and everything's great. Sometimes that's not the case. The best thing you can do is shut the valve itself, get your packing nut like this and just undo that totally and take that away. Now you'll see underneath here you have a little rubber olive. Now a lot of professional plumbers will actually have replacement olives for these and pop them in. I've got loads of these little mini olives, loads of different types of sizes and they're usually the best way to do that but you're not going to have that facility. What you're going to want to do is get yourself some PTFE tape and you're going to wrap that round the gland like so. Just keep wrapping that around. Try and get four or five wraps on there. If you put too much on, it's not gonna work all that well. And then the best thing you can do is use a small screwdriver just to poke that down into the gland packing. So it's down in there, out of the way, and then pop your gland cover back on, and then tighten that up. Just give that a nice little tighten up. Don't over tighten it, don't go completely mental. And then you should be able to open up the valve again, wipe everything down, make sure everything's nice and dry, test for leaks, and hopefully everything should be okay. So then guys, there you go. I hope that's given you a better idea about how to fix any leaks that you might have on your radiator valve. Remember what I said about that bottom nut? They're not easy because they're on the live side of the system and you've got to think about draining down, re-inhibiting and treating the system and making sure that everything works okay. Similarly, you always have to worry about if you're doing any work on a heating system that's pressurized, making sure that the pressures are okay and that everything's all right. Like I said, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We, we do loads of competitions where you can win stuff like our van magnets and stickers. We also do weekly videos of all the plumbing disasters that you guys have sent through to us at our Facebook and our Twitter. The links to subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and some of the other videos as well are available in the cards and the video description below. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching this video. Mr. G, my cat, is now happy now because this place is not wet anymore. There's no more leaks, and also I've put a dartboard up and George is getting triple 20s every time. That's a goodie as it darts. There we go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember everyone, to hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice.